Since the inception of the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination, university requirement has largely called for five subjects. Mandatory among these are English language and mathematics. Every year, thousands of students run into the course of either having to resit for not getting credits on English and mathematics or painfully changing career path or into same. To help modify this narrative, Star Television presents on your screen Learning Garage, a platform that guarantees better performance in English language and mathematics with a team of experienced teachers. So this solution you all are invited, especially those facing WASC. Learning Garage comes to you on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Repeat broadcasts are screened on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Join host Ali Santa Kamara. If you mean such element, then of course we say the waters of the world in that regard. And Babatunde Gaira Lamin on these days to make a world of difference. Action that has a numerator which is less than the denominator, we term it as a proper fraction. Hello there, I am Santa, and this is the fourth edition of Grammar Aspect of Learning Garage. Well, today we are going to actually look at adjectives, and then we will of course look at one aspect of them, that is the order of adjectives. Now, adjectives are words that tell us more about nouns. They give us more information about nouns. Now, of course, you know, nouns are persons. Nouns are places. Nouns are things. Nouns are ideas. Nouns are animals. So what adjectives do is to, of course, um, to tell you more about nouns, give you information about uh, a noun. And they do that by occupying three positions. They could come before the adjective, I mean, could come before the noun. In that case, we call them attributive adjective. For instance, a handsome boy. Handsome boy. Handsome tells us more about the boy. Boy is a noun. Handsome tells us more about what kind of boy is, is it. So that the, that the, the idea about when, of course, adjective comes before a noun. So when an adjective comes before a noun, it is called attributive adjective. Again, that's the first uh, category you will see them in the sentence. The other category is that they will come after is, was, are, uh, were, and then tell you more about a nearby noun. Okay? And that we refer to them as predicate adjective. An adjective can come after is, after was, after are, after were, and, tell, and tells you more about the subject, okay? And that is called predicative adjective. And you hear, for instance, Abu is handsome. You see, Abu is handsome, and you have is handsome. You know, handsome comes after is and tells us more about Abu. So we call our one predicative adjective, meaning adjective that we find after a linking verb okay a linking verb is a verb that connects the subject to its complement or connects the subject to a thing that describes it or a thing that renames it abu is the subject and so there describes abu so an adjective in the predicate context is called predicate adjective Predicate is everything from the verb to the last word in the sentence. Is is the verb, and of course, and from there the last word. So everything from the verb to the last word is called predicate. So um, an adjective after is or was or are is referred to as predicate adjective. So that is the other position adjective occupies the sentence. The other one again, the last one will be, we call it adjective in post position. Okay? There, that one is, uh, is the kind that you don't find in front of a noun. It's the kind that you don't find, you don't find after is or was, uh, but it's the kind you find just after the noun. So for instance, the boy, the boy in the blue suit is my friend. 
So in the blue suit tells us more about the boy. So to know whether an element is an adjective, we simply have to ask what kind or which one. We will pose this question on the noun, and if we pose this question on the noun, the answer we we'll get will be adjective. So if I say, for instance, um, the boy in the blue suit is my friend. If I ask, for instance, if I ask a question on the noun boy, which boy? You will say, for, oh, the one in the blue suit. So in the blue suit is adjective in character. It tells us more about the boy. So adjective, of course, occupies three positions of the sentence. You, you, you will find them before a noun. We call them attributive adjective. Like, for instance, handsome boy. Handsome describes boy. Or predicative adjective, where the adjective comes after is, was, are, and were, and tells us more about a subject. So, of course, abu is handsome. You see, it comes after is. So, handsome comes after is and gives us more information about abu in this case. It is, it is called predicative adjective. Again, um, we have the one that, in fact, does not come in any other position, and the one that comes just next to the noun, we call it, uh, just after the noun, we call it adjective in postposition. For instance, the boy in the blue suit is my friend, where in the blue suit, you know, gives us more information about the boy. So you see, that's what adjective does. It tells us more, it gives us more information about the noun. That's the idea about it all. But of course, it is actually always a very bad habit to use three or four or five adjectives on a trot to describe a noun. It is always a bad habit. But you find them in what? In novels. When authors want to describe characters, they want to tell you more about them. You see, they will use three or four adjectives on their own. One, two, three. And after them, you see the noun. You will see one, two, three, four, five adjectives. And after the last one, you see a noun. So it is always a bad habit, but you find them in, in highly descriptive context in novels and then when people want to actually sound very very descriptive that's how it is so in normal situation we hardly use more than two adjectives to describe one one person or one thing but if at all we are confronted with the need to use three or four adjectives to describe one thing or one person or one idea okay we have to follow a particular pattern meaning the adjectives have to follow a particular pattern. And that system we refer to as the order of adjectives. So here, of course, I've outlined for you a number of elements we consider that, in fact, a number of adjectives. If we have three or four adjectives on the run describing one thing, we must consider what to come first and what to come second. So when the need to use more than one adjective to qualify a noun arises, Determining which type of adjective should come before the, the other is important. So adjectives fall into different categories. So if you have three or four adjectives on the trot, I think what's supposed to come first? Well, let me just give you the full list. The first thing to consider will be determiners. When I say determiners, I mean the articles, you know, I mean, when I say articles, I mean the A and A and you know, and the T-H-E, the, you know, so these are called articles, if at all they are among the three or four words that together describe, of course, a nearby noun, it should be the first to come. Second, again, among the list, among the terminals, possessive, the your, the his, the are, the my, the there, the are, these are all under the terminals. If again, the, you, you see them among those describing a noun, it should be again the first. Number, meaning 10, 11, 12, 15, first, second, several, some, these are all there. They are all under the terminals. Demonstratives, I, I mean this, that, those, these, they're all there. So they all fall under determiners. Okay, so whenever you are asked about determiners, remember they are all under determiners. So if these elements, we find them among three or four words that together describe a nearby noun, then of course it should be the one, they should be the element that should come first. The other one to consider would be observation adjective or opinion adjective. Meaning, this means uh, what you think about something. We have different feelings towards something. You might consider the weather to be cold. I might see it as what? Being very hot at that. So you say, the weather is very cold today. I say, you really? It's what? To me, it's what? It's very cold at that. You say it's cold, I would say it's very warm at that. You know, so that kind of you know, difference, difference we are actually in thought or in view, we refer to as 
observation adjective or opinion adjective. So because, I mean, everybody has his or own view as to what supposed to be the thing. So cold, ugly, testy, you know, heroic, retired, carefree, enthusiastic, soft, priceless, you know, significant, you know, useless. These are all, you know, beautiful, handsome. They are all under observation adjective. They say be beauty lie in the eyes of the older. You might find somebody to be very handsome or a, a woman to be very beautiful, where another person will find the woman to be, I mean, somewhat not beautiful, you see. You see, so beauty lie in the eyes of the beholder. That is opinion. So we have a number of them. So again, if you have three or four words together describing a nearby noun, if among them you have this one, it will be the second to come. Okay, you should consider observation adjective or what we refer to as opinion adjective to come second. The third one in the list is size. Okay, size that is with huge, you know, monoschool. Monoschool also to do with again mean small. I mean uh, petite, petite means small. Or it could refer to a woman that is, that is very slim, petite, you know, big, small, medium, large. These are all under size. So if they, they are found among a list of four or five words that together describe a nearby noun, they should be what? The third to consider. Again, we have age. Age has to do with ancient, old, new, you know, young, modern. These are all, these all have to do with age, you know. So, of course, if you find this one of these words among the list of three or four words describing a nearby noun, they should be, of course, the, 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 the third, or shall I say the fourth in this case to consider. You see, we proceed on with the list. Shape. Shape is supposed to be the fifth to consider. When I mean shape, I mean square. We mean, of course, oblong. Oblong is something very wide, or long. Circular. Uh, we have round. We have curved, kind of. These are all elements doing with shape. So if they are among a list of four or five words describing a nearby noun, they should be the element to consider, should be the fifth, I mean, to consider. Again, we have what we refer to as color, green, white, blue, yellow, you know, purple, you call them up, mauve, these are all colors. If they are among a list of three or four words describing a nearby noun, they should be the, of course, the sixth to consider. Then again, we have adjective of origin. You know, I mean, when well, we mean origin, we are, we, are, we are actually pointing at things. I mean, we are referring to where things emanate, come from. So we'll say, for instance, a British watch, a Ceylonian idea, an American bag, you know, you say again, European movement, for instance. So all this one has to do with the origin, the, you know, the, 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 the area, shall I say, the place where a thing emanates from. So that's, again, we refer to as... Um, adjective of origin, if they are among a list of three or four or five words that together describe a nearby noun, it should be the, of course, the seventh to, I mean, eighth element to consider, the seventh element to consider. Again, we have um, material adjective, adjective of material. We have, you know, wooden, we have velvet, these are all material, plastic, aluminum, leather, they are all material. If they are among a list of five or six or seven words describing a nearby noun, which is hardly, we can hardly find them in regular writing, you only find this kind of system in novels, where, of course, authors, when they tend to be very expressive, they use this kind of descriptive element using four or five words on the trot to describe a nearby noun. But in regular writing, we hardly find them. We can use three being the most, or in fact, two being the regular, being regular one, and sometimes even one that's been the one we use always. So you see, so if you find material among a list of four or five words describing a nearby noun, it should be um, the, the, the eighth to consider. Then we have um, adjective, I mean, qualifier or purpose adjective. You know, a noun used as an adjective to identify the type of noun, such as what? Evening gown. If you have two nouns, they are, they are supposed to be the last, they are supposed to be the last on the trot. They are supposed to be last on the trot. And then you see them, if you have, they are kind of noun. They are kind of noun identifying the, the, the elements, the entire words are describing. They are the last you will find before you meet the noun. In fact, the entire words are describing. So you see, um, you have a nearby noun, a nearby noun describing the noun itself. So we have here a kind of um, evening gown. Evening is a noun. 
uh, describing a gown. In this case, we have to refer to as uh, uh, a noun adjunct. Again, we have bumper harvest. Bumper is a noun standing by a, 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 a noun crop to identify it. Again, we call it, of course, noun adjunct. Again, that is qualifier. We have purpose adjective. It is either you find qualifier or purpose adjective describing uh, the last item, I mean, on the trot. So again, they are the kind of adjective going with ing. They are the ing stuff. So example, you see walking stick, where of course walking is telling you more about the stick itself, matching others, where in fact matching is giving you an idea about the others. Matching other by, by itself is an expression. It means to dismiss if a uh, among a worker, if an employee has done something wrong or has gone, I mean, against the normal practice uh, at uh, in a given office, and then the the boss sees it, see to it that of course it, the the employee made it no place, I mean, uh, at work, and of course he, he will what he or she will of course dismiss the employee. We call it of course matching others. He will give will dismiss the the employee or giving the employee a matching order or matching order like that. Okay, it could also mean instruction. If you are instructed to do something, you are giving matching order like that. So what I mean here is that uh, I've given you about nine different kind of, I, I would say, adjective or words that in fact, if at all we need to use three or four or five, seven words to describe a given noun, we are in fact have to place them by order. Not at random. They are supposed to come by order. And that order, in fact, I would say is is the is the uh, the kind I have outlined for you here. So put short to make it short for you. We will of course round everything up, and then we call them dosasco MP. If you want to know about the words, the elements I've in fact outlined that you have to have in mind when dealing with adjectives. If you have four or five of them describing a given noun, how to place them, what to come first, to come, what to come second, the order in which you come. I've uh, in fact given. So of course, if you are, if you are at all, you need to learn them in a simple fashion. I think I've given you the best here. I think it's Dosasco MP. We are D has to do with determiners. We are O has to do with, of course, opinion. S has to do with size. A has to do with age. S has to do with size. I mean, shape. C has to do with color. O has to do with origin. M has to do with material. And P has to do with qualifier or purpose. So if you have any in mind, it's fine for you. Again, D has to do with um, determiners. You know, of course, the articles, the possessive, the demonstrative, the number, the over. Okay, O has to do with um, yeah, opinion adjective, of, of course. If they are there, they are supposed to be second to consider. And of course, you have size. If they are there, they are the third. If age, if they are there, they are the fourth. And um, of course, shape, if they are there, they are the, um, the fifth. Color, if they are there, they are the sixth. Origin, if they are there, they are the seventh. Material, if they are there, they are the eighth. And of course, purpose, meaning the one with the ING, or a nearby noun telling you, giving you, I mean, a random, giving you a complete idea as to the type of noun we are describing. So you see, if you've got that one in mind, let's now try some white past questions on the order of adjectives. And I've in fact also brought to you here the Sasco MP, so so to find it very difficult when going through the options. So the dash is set for the operation. The dash is set for the operation. November 2018, just last year. A, young, handsome, medical, black doctor. B, black, medical, young, handsome doctor. C, handsome, young, black, medical doctor. The handsome black medical young doctor. So you see, actually, let's now follow the rules. Let's begin with A. Young handsome medical doctor. Let's begin. Um, the rule tells us if we are to consider if we have four or five or six IT describing a nearby noun, what to do is to place them by order. And uh, if they are, that's the case, the first question will be determiner. But thankfully, we haven't got any determiner in the options, meaning we haven't got any A or AN or that or these or 10 or, or 15 or you can have several or many, they're not there. So it's out. Next is opinion adjective. Yes, of course, we have opinion among them. Ansom is an opinion, I mean, adjective. So, of course, Ansom is there. If it is there, it is the first to consider. And thankfully, A, we have young. Instead of having opinion here, opinion is supposed to be the first. 
we have of course we have age so we have this is wrong and then the the other of course the, the elements in this option do not follow i mean the order the right order so here we are we have young young supposed to come in and some supposed to come before young so it's wrong here and medical you see black coming after medical and medical is what we refer to as a kind of a qualifier adjective giving you more it's supposed to be next to the noun we are describing so a is wrong because even from the start we have seen that in fact we are supposed to have here uh supposed to have a opinion but we have what we have age before opinion so it's wrong so we come down to b we have black black is color and thankfully we have opinion adjective in the option so considering black to be considering black referring to black or considering black as being the first on the trot is wrong because we have opinion in the options so again b we have medical so of course this is highly uh packed this is uh, is packed in a very uh shall i say uh disorderly manner so we come to c C, we have Ansom, yes. Ansom is an opinion adjective. Of, it's supposed to be the first. We, are, we accept that one. And uh, we are after opinion. We are supposed to have what we refer to as size. But thankfully, we haven't got any size in the option. So next to consider will be age. And we have age is young. So of course, Ansom, Ansom, uh, fine. Young is fine because after opinion, we have to, we have to come to what? To, to size. But we haven't got any size there. The next supposed to be age. Um, we haven't got, we have age there, of course, young is age. Then black color, after age, we're supposed to look for for shape. We haven't got there any shape, but we have there, we have there, of course, color. So black, again, for the, the, the trot. And of course, and medical, medical there is, of course, the qualifier that's supposed to be, ne supposed to stand next to the noun you're describing. So, of course, C is the answer. Because if we look at D again, of course, D we have answer as being the first, but again, Opinion after opinion, we are supposed to have what? Supposed to have size, no size and age. But after answer, we have black here. So meaning the order, the, the elements in this option are not in the right order. So D is wrong. So the correct option is option C. We come to question two. Uh, I bought my dash today, November 2017. I bought my dash today. Of course, A, we have very red first letter bag. B, we have red very first bag letter C, we have first red, very leather bag. D, we have very first red leather bag. So we begin. Let's follow our audio. Now, very is a degree adverb. Very is a degree adverb and is not part of the element we have considered. So it's supposed to be the first, in fact, before we begin to look at the, the, the orderly elements we have pointed out. Okay? So very in every I mean, indication is supposed to be the first to consider. So let's see. A, very, very is fine. But when we look at the options, we have red here, and no, and yeah, we have we have first. First is kind of number, so you know, under the terminal, the terminal, I mean, involves also number as well. First is another, is another one there again. So after very, what we are supposed to see, we are supposed to have, I mean, uh, first, not not red, because from from the terminal, we are supposed to to have what opinion, but we don't have any opinion there. We are, as opinion, we are supposed to have. Uh, size, we haven't got any size there. Next one, we're supposed to have age, we haven't got any age there. After that, we're supposed to have uh, 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 shape, we haven't got any shape. Next, color, no color there. Um, of course, O, origin, we haven't got any origin. M, material, so material. So meaning, two things to consider here. The first to be um, determiner and what? And material, because leather is a material thing. So we uh, thankfully, I think we, are, we have read, I'm sorry. So uh, from from the terminal, the next to consider will be um, will be color. We have color there, and the next will be material. So we're going now, here we have very red fourth letter bag. Very is fine, but red, no, is wrong. Why? Because we are supposed to have first after very, because that's in the determiner. B, red, very first bag letter. Of course, this one is disorderly is not in the order we are expecting it to be. So, of course, red, very first bag letter is, of course, not in the order, um, because we are supposed to have um, um, the, the, the degree adverb first, and as I just told you, because degree adverb is not among the elements we, we outlined under the order, the, the adjectives 
and the order immediately to come. So we have C. C, we have first red, very, very letter bag. Again, it's wrong. It's very, very wrong. And then we have what? We have very, very is fine here. We have first, first is fine here. Because in the in the in discussion MP, the first one is determiner. And among the determiner, among the elements in under the determiner, we are supposed to consider um, we have their number. And first is a kind of indicating position, kind of. And of course, uh, we have um, after determiner, we have to look for of course color. And of course, red is fine there. And uh, after color, we have to look for material. And material, leather is a material, is there again, and we have the noun bag. So, of course, D is our answer, okay? D is our answer. Then we come to the next question. Sally assisted me in buying my dash yesterday. Sally assisted me in buying my dash yesterday, uh, 2012 was, okay? So, we have, again, very first party dress. And, um, you know, B, we have first very party dress, see we have party very first dress, do we have party dress first very, can you imagine that? So we begin now, um, following, we are using our, our do Sasko MP to arrive at the answer, the correct answer. I told you very is not among them, it is a degree adverb, so it should be the first before we come to even the list. So very, here we have a very fine, first is fine again. So very is fine, uh, first is fine, Party is a purpose adjective, and after party, what to expect will be the noun. So, of course, A, of course, is the answer. We haven't gone there, but of course, following the principles, we have arrived at the answer safely. So, B, first um, is wrong because we have the degree adverb, supposed to be the first. C, party very is wrong, and the party dress very is wrong again. So, of course, safely, we have arrived at the answer. A is our answer. We come down to the next question. Mary has misplaced a dash. Mary has misplaced a dash. A, we have American blue leather bag. B, we have blue leather American bag. C, we have American leather blue bag. D, we have blue American leather bag. You see, we begin now following our Dosasco MP. Please have that in mind. Dosasco MP, always let it be in your mind for short. For the nine areas we have considered and uh, under the order of adjective. So here we have American blue leather bag. Um... Yeah, thankfully we have uh, blue, so blue is supposed to be the first to consider because we have three adjectives here, we have America, we have blue, we have leather, and in our discussion MP, because we haven't got there any uh, determiner, no, no opinion adjective there, no, no size, no, no age, okay, no shape, color is there, so color is supposed to be the first to consider, as a color, we have to consider, of course, um, Origin, but have, yes, we had the origin. American is an origin, and the third consider will be material be in this order. So we say American is wrong because the first consider is uh, is is color and color. We have American blue is wrong. We are supposed to have blue first, so A is wrong. B blue leather American bag. Of course, we have blue is fine, but leather after blue we are supposed to have um, origin, which is American. So of course that is, is B is wrong. Uh, see, we have American leather blue bag is wrong because we, we have their color, so color is supposed to be the first to consider, and here we have blue, we have American as being the first element on the trot. D, we have blue, fine, blue is color, and other color we have to consider material, I mean origin. American is an origin telling us where in fact the bag comes from, and of course leather gives us the, the material, so you see we have what? We have blue American leather bag, so it's, it's correct. So Mary has misplaced a blue American leather bag. So of course D is her answer. Then we come to the last question. He bought his wife a dash dress. He bought his wife a dash dress. A, we have pretty blue silk party. B, blue, blue pretty silk party. C, silk blue pretty party. D, party blue silk party. You can hear, in fact, I, 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 I find it even difficult to go around the, the words, uh, in fact, how they are being uh, packed. So we say, let's begin. A, we have following our do Sasko MP to arrive at the answer. Um, A, pretty, pretty is um, opinion adjective. And thankfully, we have one bl pretty blue silk. We have kind of a, we have three, four adjective. Four adjective on the trot to describe a nearby noun dress in this case. So, of course, pretty is fine because we haven't got the any determiner. And we have their opinion adjective. Pretty is opinion. 
Something can be pretty to you, but to the other man, it can be what ugly. That's opinion or observation. So we have opinion there, supposed to be the first to consider. And after opinion, we have, uh, we haven't got any size there, no age there, no, we, no, no age there, no shape, but we have color, meaning from, uh, from observation, we have to consider what? Consider color. And from color, we have to consider material. Material, silk is material, and purpose, adjective parties a purpose adjective so here we have pretty pretty is fine and after pretty what to consider would be um color and color comes second blue i mean pretty blue is fine silk is a um, material um because we, are, we, are, we haven't got there any origin but we have the material and of course so material is fine too Party is a purpose adjective describing the nearby noun dress. So, of course, without even having to go through all, we have seen the answer. A is the answer. Okay. And then let's go to, to, to B. Blue, pretty, silk, party dress is wrong because, of course, pretty is an opinion adjective. It must come before blue. And C, silk, blue is wrong. And, of course, D, party, O. Oh, party is supposed to be the last element in the, the trot. So, of course, it's wrong. Our answer is, of course, D. So, you see, so kindly follow uh the dosasco mp um formula i have given you it will help you a lot in a number of circumstances uh for any high under test this is a test of course you face you know was examination is a very high under examination that of course if you do well in it you'll be able to do well in any other advanced examination um regarding english itself so all that's just we have for um for uh, for the order of adjective. Let's come to another component regarding again adjective. This time around, comparative adjectives, meaning to compare adjective. You know, we, we have, we have, we have, we have, um, we have uh, absolute. We have comparative. We have superlative. The absolute is the normal form. The comparative when involves when it involves two entities, and the superlative when it involves three or more. I mean entities in that regard. So of course, but we will sp will pay. I mean a kind of attention to words uh, cases where I, which are in fact very special when it comes to comparative adjective in this case and these are uh, words these words involve um, include superior inferior prefer senior junior okay superior inferior prefer normally when we compare two things we have to use dan abu is bigger than alpha okay we have big big is absolute of course the normal form Bigger is the comparative aspect, two things, two things, of course. And we have what? We have biggest. That is the uh, superlative involving three or more elements. Okay? You see, so normally when we compare two things, we use dumb. But when using superior, inferior, prefer, senior, junior, we are not to use done. Instead, we have to use two. Two, what we call two. T-O is two, as you, as you regard T O W as two and T O as two again. That's very T O O is two, T W O is two, and T O O is two. Please learn that, okay? So superior, inferior, prefer, senior, junior. They are not to take Dan. Don't say um, Amara is superior than Alpha. It's wrong. It should be Amara is superior to Alpha. So example here I've given you. Jane is superior. Jane is superior, and you can see here Jane is being compared to who? To Kadi, and we don't use the other one. Jane is superior to Kadi. You cannot say Jane is superior than Kadi. These four words are supposed to take two always. Again, Mr. Kamara is senior to Mrs. Kuruma. You see, Mr. Kamara here is being compared, his qualities are uh, being compared, shall I say, his quality is being compared to that of uh, Mrs. Kuruma and using what two in this case. You cannot say Mr. Kamara is senior than Mrs. Kuruma. But when you use senior, when you use uh, uh, junior, you use prefer, when you use inferior, and the one that is mostly misused is prefer. I prefer Gary than cassava, or I prefer Gary than rice. People say so. We should be, I prefer Gary to rice. You see? That's how we should be. So quickly have a look at this one. That in fact, superior, inferior, prefer, senior, junior. Are in fact, adjectives are what? Should take the preposition to, not the adverb done. Done is an adverb. 
to is a proposition okay in this case so let's have a, a, a I mean one past question regarding this one just to show you how important they are okay so we have here um this is a past question on comparative adjective and i also include one there again that is of course not the same so the engine is dash that one the engine is dash that one a we have superior than that one and the problem if you haven't got any grasp of the fact that in, that's when we use superior but we use the, uh, uh, two you will of course be thinking about that that in fact then will be the answer but of course a is wrong why because we have done there the engine is dash that one and that is to say the engine is superior than that one so a is wrong b more the engine is more superior than that one of course um you know um B is wrong for two reasons. A is wrong for one reason because of Dan, but B, let me just highlight one again. B is wrong because of, I mean, A is wrong because of Dan, but B is wrong because of two words, because of more and because of Dan. You know, we call this one, uh, what we refer to as double, double, double comparison. When you use two comparative or two superlative words to describe one element, you are, of course, you run into a problem. You run into grammatical mistake. The most common among the mistakes we find here would be better. I am more better than you. I am more better than you. More is a comparative. Better is a comparative. So using two comparative words to describe one, one element is wrong. It should be, I am better than you, because we have... The absolute form of better is, is, is good. The comparative form is better. The comparative form is best. You see, two things, better. You say this one is better than this one. You cannot say this one is more better than that one. It's wrong. You cannot use more there again. So if you do that one, we call it, we call it double, double, double comparison. More is, is, is comparative. Better is comparative. Using those two to describe one, we call it double comparison. This is the, the most common mistake I, I think I, 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 I find, I see every day, I hear every day like that. So B is wrong with two reasons for the more and for the than. We cannot use than with superior in this case. So of course, C, we have more superior to. Why? So of course, um, C is wrong for only one reason for the more. Because it's, we run into the mistake we regard as what? As double, I mean, comparison. Because more is comparative element, it's a comparative element, superior, I mean, it's the same thing. Uh, so you see, we have one problem here, more superior than, the engine is superior, or the engine is more superior to that one, it's wrong. D, of course, by default will be, the one, will be our answer. So the engine is superior to that one, you see, no than, no more. It gives you the impression that in fact D is the answer. So the engine is superior to that one. So you see, so we come to the other question, actually it is not ab about junior, inferior, superior, but again it's about comparative adjective again. Yeah, it's about, we say when we refer to three or more, we use superlative. Two, we use uh, comparative, absolute just one, one. So you see, of the three girls, Fatou is the dash. Remember, these are past questions. Of the three girls, Fatou is the dash. A, we have three, of the three girls gives you an impression of more than two. So we are to talk about the superlative in this case. Okay? So of the three girls, Fatou is the dash. A, tallest. It's fine. We're not having to go far. A is the answer. Let's, let's just try to qualify why in fact A is the answer by going through the remaining options. B, taller. Well, no. Yeah, we are talking about three people. So you see, three persons normally. We say three persons in this case. So B is wrong. I mean, you can say just taller, two people. Career 2 is taller than Aminata, it's fun, two people. But career 2 is the tallest of the three girls. That's correct. So, of course, C, most tall. Well, most tall, this one is, is very, very big. It's a very big mistake. Most tall, uh -uh, using, using superlative element with absolute. That cannot work. So, of course, it's wrong. The, of the three girls, for three is the tall. Well, that one. Is, so, the best has been tallest of the three girls Fatou is the tallest so of course a is our answer we are going for a break we'll come back i'll give you something very new
Since the inception of the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination, university requirement has largely called for five subjects. Mandatory among these are English language and mathematics. Every year, thousands of students run into the course of either having to resit for not getting credits on English and mathematics or painfully changing career path or into same. To help modify this narrative, Star Television presents on your screen Learning Garage, a platform that guarantees better performance in English language and mathematics with a team of experienced teachers. To this solution, you all are invited, especially those facing WASC. Learning Garage comes to you on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Repeat broadcast are screened on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Join host Ali Santa Kamara. If you mean such element, then of course we we'll say the waters of the world in that regard. And Babatunde Gaira Lamin on these days to make a world of difference. Action that as a numerator, which is less than the denominator, we term it as a proper fraction. Welcome back. And of course, this is a learning garage, the English aspect. Um, if you're joining us, we are, we are of course discussing about adjectives, the order of adjectives, um, again, comparative adjectives. We, of course, have gone through past questions. We have seen, in fact, how they can be used in, in of course, in reality. So to round this class up, I have, an, uh, I mean, a number of few items, I would say, to consider. Uh, which I, in fact, I find very um, important. These are things we have to know because we use them. We most times use them, but we are not, of course, in conformity with actually what is right and what is wrong and when they should be used or not. So here I have one, um, I have a uh, one to one versus one on one. One to one versus one on one. We do hear this one. One on one. I will engage him on a one on one meeting. I will engage him on one to one meeting. That's hardly, I hardly, but in Creole we say one to one and sometimes we even say one on one. But both of them are correct. Both of these expressions are correct. So it's a matter of meaning, meaning, uh, well, in context, meaning in context. But of course, they, they share almost the same meaning, well, almost the same meaning because they can be used in almost the same uh, environment. But of course, there, there is a slight difference. You know, one to one actually has to do with engaging somebody. I mean, directly having a direct encounter with somebody. I mean, on, on a matter. That's one aspect. But again, it's it's mostly used to refer to somebody pouring out knowledge to somebody, like teacher and student relationship. You would say, for instance, you know, uh, to engage a teacher, teacher to engage a pupil. You would say a one to one. I mean, a, 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 a one to one. I mean, engagement. In that regard, it could also mean to have a direct encounter with somebody, but it's mostly used, I mean, to refer to a teacher having time with, I mean, having, can I say, private time with uh, a pupil in this in this context, okay? Um, and it is used, it is a British kind of expression. And uh, we have one-on-one. One-on-one, -on -one. One -on -one, you will see a player attacking or having, shall I say, a dealing with another player directly. In the picture of play, you see this one. I mean, uh, on the picture of play, football, you see a player having a direct encounter with another player, tackling him, I mean, preventing him from not, of course, going to the scoring, scoring I mean, position. That is the essential meaning of one-on-one. -on -one. It could also mean to have a direct encounter with somebody again. So the, the meaning both share, the, the platform, in fact, where they meet, is the fact that uh, you could say one to one to mean having direct encounter with somebody. If you say again one on one to mean the same thing, but we, we almost always use one to one to mean, I mean, teacher student relationship. One on one could be a player having a direct encounter with another player, or it could mean to have, I mean, a dealing with passing one on one dealing, one on one, I mean, a face to face dealing kind of. You know, that's the meaning. That those are the meanings. 
those two elements, those two expressions possess. So in, from now on, if you have to use one on one and one to one, try to be sure well of, in fact, where they are part, the aspect of a teacher student relationship and the aspect of what direct encounter. I mean, you see where they merge and where, in fact, they are part. So one to one, the separate meaning would be uh, a teacher having a direct tie, a direct encounter with a pupil, kind of pouring out knowledge. Or if you say one on one, actually mean a player having a direct encounter with another player. So you see, so that is one meaning they share, and the other meaning that of course you find uh, predominantly for one to one. So we come down to the expression. We almost always use them. Um, I gave, I, I gave Almami, I gave Alusain, Aminata, uh, the last but not the least, Musu, for instance. So we most of use. Last but not the least, or the last but not the least. So we have to know actually what is correct. Should it be the last but not the least, or last but not the least, or last but not the least? The correct idiom is last but not least. Last but not least. Don't ever say the last but not the least, or last but not the least. It should be last but not least. But. Last but not least. Very, very essential. You see, so don't say the last but not the least, and again, don't say the last but not the least. Say last but not least. Okay, so we come down to very and two, very and two. For instance, somebody say this place is very hot, and somebody say uh, somebody says this place is too hot. So this place is very hot. This place is too hot. Two words. And you think people don't think about the differences actually. And having the differences in mind, very, very essential. You see, it makes you speak well, it's confidence. And one way to speak with confidence is to be sure of what you are saying. People go jittery when they know, of course, not, not because they are shy, it's sometimes because even they cannot speak very well. They cannot write very well. But if you are sure of what you are saying, why have to run into jitsuki? So, of course, very and two, very and two. So the place is very hot and the place is too hot. Let's use that one first as a, as a case in point. First, very means, very is expressing ordinary fact. Ordinary fact, no addition, no less, no more, no less. Okay? Very is expressing ordinary fact. Whereas two means there's a problem. Two always has the connotation of something problematic. Okay? Or, or of something... I mean, going beyond the limit. So when you say two, something going beyond the limit, actually. That's what it means, okay, in degree fashion. So very means, very is expressing ordinary fact, whereas two is expressing um, actually something more than the limit, something, well, bad, I would say. If I say, for instance, the place is very hot, well, that's ordinary fact, is hot. Although it's place, the place is hot, well, but I'm fine. I'm not actually finding myself. I'm still within the area, so the place is very hot. But if you say the place is too hot, it means that gone by the limit. Probably you are prospering. You are, you are of course, of course. Uh, I mean, open your your shirt. I mean, remove your shirt. You are finding yourself. I mean, looking for a place to. I mean, get good. Of course, uh, uh, shall I say, um, here. Yeah, so that would be the place is too hot, meaning it has gone by the limit. In fact, it has impacted you so much that in fact you have removed your shirt. You're now finding yourself finding a place to, of course, feel comfortable. So very is expressing ordinary fact, but two, I mean, is about something beyond the limit. Example, this car, this, this tape is very expensive, and this tape is too expensive. If you say this, this tape is very expensive, well, that's fact. Although it's expensive, I bought it anyway. The tape is very expensive. Yes, it's expensive, that's ordinary fact. But although it's very expensive, I bought it anyway. But of course, the tape is too expensive, meaning it is so expensive that I cannot buy it. I went to town, I mean, I bargained price with the seller, and I couldn't, I, I couldn't of course, buy it. The money I, I, I had on me was not enough to, to purchase the tape. So meaning, I didn't got enough money on me, that's a problem, of course. So the, the tape is too expensive, so much that I couldn't, of course, buy it. But the tape is very expensive. As the ordinary fact, although it's expensive, I bought it anyway. Again, you see, 
uh, the idea about very and true. So when we say very, it means ordinary fact. But if we say true, the problem. Again, Ali is very tall, and Ali is too tall. If we say Ali is very tall, well, that's ordinary fact. Wow, you are marrying Ali as a, as being a tall person. But Ali is too tall, meaning uh, Ali is so tall that what he had to hit his air against the ceiling on going out outside. You see, so two means as a problem. Very your only expression is, I mean, ordinary fact. We come down to on, using on and at the street. So can I say, um, I live on Campbell Street. I live on number 11 Campbell Street. Or can I say, I live at number 11 Campbell Street. So when do we use at and when do we use on the street? You see, we use on when we don't mention the number of the street. The number, shall I say, the number, of, we, don't, we don't mention the address. Shall I say the number? I live on Campbell Street is fine. I live on Janet Lane is fine. I live on Omar Street is fine. Because we, we don't, of course, mention the number, the address. But of course, if you mention the number, the address, you require at in this case. So I live at 11 Campbell Street. I live at 12 Janet Lane. I live at 3 Omar Street. I mean, so that's actually is about when you use at, you require the number. But when you don't have their number, you have to use on. My father has a house on Campbell Street. You don't say, my father has a house at Campbell Street. No, my father has a house on Campbell Street. We live on Campbell Street. You see? So you use on without the number, and you use at when you have the number. Okay? I think we have done uh, well for this class going through adjectives, I mean, order of adjectives, using, also looking at, again, comparative adjective, the, the issue of superior, inferior, junior, prefer, you call them up, how in fact they should go with two, and now we are on to this one, the issue of very two, on and out with streets. In fact, this is how we will leave you today, okay? Um, until next week, I have been your presenter, Santa Tata. Since the inception of the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination, university requirement has largely called for five subjects. Mandatory among these are English language and mathematics. Every year, thousands of students run into the course of either having to resit for not getting credits on English and mathematics or painfully changing career path or into same. To help modify this narrative, Star Television presents on your screen Learning Garage, a platform that guarantees better performance in English language and mathematics with a team of experienced teachers. To this solution, you all are invited, especially those facing WASC. Learning Garage comes to you on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 7pm to 8pm. Repeat broadcasts are screened on Saturdays from 7am to 8am and on Sundays from 1pm to 2pm. Join host Ali Santa Kamara. If you mean such element, then of course we we'll say the waters of the world in that regard. And Babatunde Gaira Lamin on these days to make a world of difference. Action that has a numerator which is less than the denominator will term it as a proper fraction. Mm -hmm.